Uh, welcome, folks, to the uh, to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Metropolitan Planning Commission. I want to um, open things up here uh, by letting you know we have two consent agenda items and four public hearings. And then at the end of the meeting, we have a presentation from the State Department of Transportation on the rehabilitation of Interstate 20. So uh, I believe there were some agendas that were put outside uh, the meeting room. If you want to have a copy, there should be some there. Um, for public hearing agenda items, if you wish to make comments on an application, uh, there are comment slips at the speaker stand next to the podium. For future notification purposes, it is very important that you fill out a slip and drop it in the box when you come forward to speak. Um, before you address the, the board, please state your full name, your mailing address, and your zip code. Uh, we'll call on each case on the agenda in order and hear first from the applicant, then those speaking in favor. Ten minutes are allotted for the principal spokesperson, three minutes for each additional speaker. Uh, we'll then hear from those wishing to speak against an application. Again, ten minutes are allotted for the principal spokesperson, three minutes for each additional speaker. Uh, one representative of the application can then speak in rebuttal if desired. After hearing comments on each case, the board will immediately deliberate and vote on that case before moving on to the next item on the agenda. Please note when the board is deliberating, members of the public are not permitted to comment. Uh, any member of the public may request a copy of the board's decisions on a particular case by contacting our office. Uh, after 1 p.m. tomorrow, 673-6480 is the main number, or by going to our website, ShreveportCaddoMPC.com. For consent agenda items, which are at the head of our agenda, and other agenda items not requiring a public hearing, public comments can be made upon request by filling out a comment slip. If comments are requested for a specific agenda item, the chair that would be me, will offer an opportunity for those comments prior to the commission taking action. All of the board's zoning recommendations are submitted to the city council for final action. Please note it is your responsibility to contact the appropriate governing body about their procedures as related to the matter you're concerned with. Um, copies of this document and the phone numbers to contact all the governing bodies uh, are available on the table next to the podium and in the entryway. As a courtesy, please remember to turn off your cell phones. Uh, we value your testimony and appreciate your compliance with these guidelines. And I, for one, am sure happy that the uh, barriers have been removed from this dais up here. I think it's going to make it a lot easier for us to communicate back and forth. So, uh, my name is Bill Robertson, and I'm the chairman right now. It's time for us to open the meeting. We typically have a prayer and a pledge of allegiance. So I'm going to ask Ms. Jackson, as traditional, to lead us in prayer and Mr. Elberson to lead us with the pledge. And if you care to join us, please stand. Please bow your heads. Father God, we come to you with bow down heads and humble hearts, asking you to just watch over each and every one of us that are here today, Lord. Let this meeting be what you would have it to be. Let us carry out your business and walk the walk that you would have us to walk, and also talk that talk, Lord. Thank you for blessing our bodies, healing our bodies, and letting it be what you would have it to be. Just cover us throughout this whole duration of this day to where we're going to depart to, and may these blessings be upon you. Amen. 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 
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We uh, last met on February 1st. Uh, we had no business on the March date, so we passed on March. Uh, so we have minutes of the February meeting that are pending approval. Motion to approve. And a motion Second. to approve has been made by Mr. Andrews and seconded <coughs> by Mr. Moss. <coughs> Is there any further discussion on these minutes? Uh, hearing none, I'm calling for a vote. Please vote your machines. And I'm assuming the technology is going to work today, Mr. Clark. I'm real hopeful, Mr. Clark. There it is. It's working. Okay. Minutes have been approved. Um, uh, I was incorrect. I think yes, we're going to have. If I may, if you would allow me, please, sir. Uh, we, I'm going to pass on to Mr. Clark. Thank you so much, sir. We asked uh, Aaron McCannon and the representatives from Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development uh, to come and give you an update on. Um, the plan uh, rehab of I-20, and I think it's from Monkhouse Drive to Industrial Loop, uh, Industrial Drive in Bolger. So, Ms. Buchanan, would you provide the board with that update, please? Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you all for having us. Um, my name is Aaron Buchanan. I'm the Public Information Officer for DOTD. This is Mr. Kevin Blunk. He's one of our area engineers for Caddo and Red River parishes. Um, we are here to provide some preliminary information about our I-20 project. That is the project to repair I-20. Thank goodness. So that project is coming up. Uh, we're going to flip through, and I'll keep it fairly brief. I know you guys have an agenda you need to get to. Um, and hopefully you've all got the printed out version, the hard copies of our presentation in front of you. But just to go over some of the um, high level project details, we do have a firm letting date for this project. That means it's going to go to bid on May 10th of this year, so a little less than a month from now. Um, we anticipate giving the notice to proceed to the contractor uh, sometime in the July time frame. That's basically the green light to the contractor uh, to start their assembly period and eventually to start work. Um, we uh, anticipate a 30 to 90 day calendar, calendar day assembly period. That's the allotted time for the contractor to kind of get their ducks in a row, prepare for work, gather personnel and equipment. Uh, the contractor will bid their own days, so they'll bid what they feel is a reasonable amount of time to finish this project. We anticipate, you know, in the time frame of about 600 days, so a two to two and a half year long project. Um, we're looking at a, a cost of around 90 million at this point when you take into account inflation and um, cre increasing costs of materials and labor and all that's involved in a major construction contract. So the total limits of this project uh, on the western end are in Pines Road in Shreveport and on the eastern end the I-220 interchange in Bossier. Part of that is patching and part of that is a total reconstruction. The rehab, the total reconstruction is from around Traffic Street, so just west of Benton Road in Bossier City uh, to Industrial Drive. So that's the part in Bossier City. Um, that is everyone's least favorite to drive pretty much at this point. So that's the part that's going to be completely removed and reconstructed down to the base of the roadway. Um, and oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. And then the other part of it that I mentioned, we'll get to a little bit more is the, the patching part of it. That's the concrete repairs to I-20 outside of the scope of the major rehab. So basically from Pines Road um, to about I-49, You've got uh, quite a bit of, yeah, by, quite a bit of concrete patching there. About 300,000 square feet of it will seal joints as well, uh, replace some roadway striping, add the shields to the concrete, the ones that indicate I-49 and I-20, the large shields. And then the same on the Bossier side of that, from industrial to red chute, which is just east of I-220, um, we'll have about 250 uh, feet of ceiling joints, um, more roadway striping and concrete patching there as well. So not just the uh, major rehab, but we also have additional repairs to the corridor. And that will be nighttime work. Yeah, the patching will be nighttime work. Of course, the rehab will have to be around the clock, obviously. But this is a, a little bit closer view 
of the, the patching portion of it there, the Caddo Parish portion from I-49 to Market. Uh, all of those little red pin, uh, little yellow pins indicate areas of concrete patching through there. Um, and then the Pines Road to Monk House, additional, there were just so many we couldn't fit it all on one uh, section of mapping, but that's additional um, concrete patching locations there for Caddo. And then as far as the um, traffic management portion of this, uh, we will have a motorist assistance patrol vehicle that's dedicated to this project. You've probably seen our map trucks driving around. They have um, you know, particular routes that they drive all the time, but we'll have a truck that's dedicated just to this project that can assist motorists that have been in a, a crash or that are stranded. Uh, we'll also have a tow truck that's dedicated just to this project as well because once we reduce the lanes on I-20, any kind of incident within those limits is really going to restrict, you know, of course, any traffic flow through there. So the goal is to move any incidents out of the way as quickly and as safely as possible um, to get traffic moving as well. That'll, those will be both 24-hour operations. That, that uh, tow truck is going to be the size that's specified, specified to. It's not going to be just a little tow truck. It's going to be something that's of, of substance. And also included in this project are preemptive warning, so queue detection. The queue is the long line of cars that develops um, as part of congestion. And so these are a warning system that's included in this project to give motorists uh, real-time indications of what the traffic conditions are like as they're approaching the construction project. That kind of gives you a breakdown of each of the directional systems that we're going to have. The eastbound system and the westbound will have signs at those particular locations that you see listed there. Uh, we also have an option included for our project engineer to add additional signs if we see that that's necessary. And we really feel like that is going to uh, be of great assistance to people who are approaching the construction zone um, and want to take an alternate route. But really, additionally, we're going to be pushing um, any through traffic to take 220 to travel around. So we want to avoid as much through travel through the construction zone as possible. There's already going to be um, a significant impact, as we know, to, you know, to travel through the region. And so if people are just traveling through, we don't want them to go through the construction zone. We want them to loop around. So we'll be pushing people to do that as well. Question. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, does DOTD know how many through traffic vehicles use the bypasses now? That use the loop, the, yes. the loose, use 220? I think we're between anywhere 60 to 80,000 vehicles on average per day. Is there a percentage that you could break it down for? A percentage of? Of overall traffic going through the city or the metropolitan area. So in other words, what do those 60 to 80,000 vehicles mm -hmm. represent in terms of total traffic? As opposed to what you're Is calling it? local versus uh, through? Is that what you're asking? Or what's Ohio the State percentage? Versus, uh, Shreveport, Black we don't have that specific of a breakdown, but in comparison to, to I-20, uh, you know, in the section over the Red River, which is our most heavily traveled section, we're between 80 and 100,000 on average vehicles per day. What's the message going to say for people approaching the city or approaching the metropolitan area about this work? Through tra I mean, the, the ultimate goal is to remove as much through traffic out of the construction zone as possible. So, so um, yeah, well, first off, that's kind of our next section that you're asking about. But, but along the same lines, you, you're got, we've got nine well, well, in this, this slide, you've got nine little portables that, uh, that will be on either side, the west or the east side, the, uh, they will show, they will say lane closed ahead, uh, what have you. We will have some um, permanent printed signs at I-220 I that will say uh, recommended uh, motor route. Through traffic to I-220. Right. We're strongly urging tr through traffic to take out to loop around is that what you're asking so they won't say prepare to be annoyed 
Yeah. yeah <laughs> That's just a little comedic relief <laughs> through the That's difficulty of this project. Um, you will, you should prepare to be somewhat annoyed. Uh, the sign won't say that, but we're hoping people understand that. But the, the signs will be pushing people to, through traffic to take out you. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. And, and back to what we what you just talked about there. In, uh, as a local Shreveport people, we, uh, if there is a slowdown uh, and stop, slow will have one message, stop will have another message. And it, it starts in, over there in Bozier. Then you'll see on at Burt Coons there'll be a sign that says uh, at uh, in Bozier on I twenty there's a slowdown or a stop. So then you can make your decisions to take thirty one thirty two or uh, or exit off completely. Or local traffic, Jimmy Davis Bridge, Triple Parksdale, such things. Yeah. Like that. So that this is we've never had this before. But, but, we're but other projects in Louisiana have right, had right. this system but in place, and it worked very well. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. And so not to get too deep into the weeds on this, but you know, the, the rehabilitation portion of this will have one lane closed in each direction. And so obviously um, that is any kind of traffic restriction on I-20 really at any time of day is going to have an, a pretty significant impact and we'll start to see queuing even for a short amount of time. So around the clock traffic restrictions, again, uh, prepare to be annoyed, but also prepare to take an alternate route. And that's, you know, as we get closer to this, that's, that's obviously what we're going to be uh, relaying to people. And um, just moving along to some of the ramps, the, 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 in addition to the reconstruction on the through lanes of I-20, the, the interchanges are being reconstructed as well. So the on and off ramps are also being rebuilt. And this just kind of gives you um, a look at the phasing of those and the staging of the various ramps and interchanges and how those are going to be rebuilt as well. And so um, that's a very high level overview of the upcoming project once it goes to bid and we have a contract awarded and a contractor selected um, you know we'll be issuing some much more specific information as far as start dates and times and length of, of construction and phasing and all of that um, but we did want to come and provide this information so everybody's aware that it's very near and then these are just some additional upcoming projects that may affect I-20 uh, unrelated to this project just so you have some knowledge of what's on the way for I-20, just some various um, overlays and um, ramp extensions and different things like that. But I, I wanted y'all to be aware that we are aware <laughs> that uh, projects also, these are the list of the projects in Caddo that we are, I am keeping in my mind that may be affected by this interstate traffic. Yeah. Because we are, we're talking about a two, two and a half year um, project depending on what this contractor that bids and gets awarded. And then the final slide is just any further questions that the group may have. Thank you. What are shields? The, the interstate emblem that's placed on the actual travel lane that you see it as you're driving to say, to indicate I'm approaching I-20 or I-49 that looks like the interstate shield, but it's just, an emblem that's pl installed on the concrete. There used to be them on I-20, but they're all worn off. Yeah, some of them are halfway there and scuffed up a little bit, but they're still there. They'll, they'll have one that'll say LA-1, and then that's the one that's gonna be the North Market uh, lane, and then the other two will be I-20, and then you'll have an I-49 uh, lane, and then you'll have a 220 down there at Pines and all. Mr. All your stripe is, is going to be uh, touched up from pines, all, the Caddo is going to get all restriping, and we're finally getting some preventive maintenance on that interstate uh, on the concrete part where we're sawing and sealing, and that's going to be the first time that we saw and seal uh, the interstate. Uh, I think ever. Yes, sir. Did you have a question? Yes. If we have questions <laughs> offline, can you leave your contact info? Absolutely. Okay. Thanks sure. a lot. Yes. Yeah. How long do interstates last? Well, this one's going on, what, 60 years? 67, so, and it's never been touched in both. That's the original pavement that we're driving on. Interstate 20 was built in 1967. Mm -hmm. Great investment. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the, it's the, outlived its service life. Yeah. 
the rehab. This time it's going to be uh, probably asphalt. You, you, there's an alternative. There's a, a A and a B bid, which means that they, they're, the contractor is going to have the option of doing asphalt versus concrete. And so, uh, concrete usually by our textbooks are last 40 years, and asphalt by our textbook says 20 years. That's what they tell us in college. Now, of course. Like I said, this thing was built in 67. So what did they use in 1967? Okay. Concrete. 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 But That's there. It, we, as she's saying, the, the finances now, uh, we're looking at, you know, 90 to $100 million. And that's not what it cost in 1967. <laughs> yeah. Why isn't the state specifying concrete or asphalt? We did we originally. Did. In November uh, of 2021, when it went to bid and it came previously, in, and, uh, the estimate was 60 million dollars, and it came in at 80 million dollars. So, this is a cost-saving um, measure measure that you give the contractor, whoever's going to bid it, another option to, to for them to show us the the savings. Okay. So, is is it? Expected that the bidder, the winning bidder, will be asphalt. I would expect it. No, they, they, they are supposed to be apples. And We've just apples. given them a little more flexibility in, in, in the my bidding you know, in my than the previous bid. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Andrews. Thank you all for the report, and the, and the PowerPoint's really cool. <laughs> will this work be broken into parts for different contractors or is no. one company going to do the whole thing this is well, one, one project will be the prime the contractor prime. i anticipate depending on what contractor i would anticipate that the contractor that does the 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 patching in caddo and and on the east side of bozer will be a subcontractor i know that the stripers are going to be a subcontractor and um and probably the saw and sealer will be a subcontractor. However, there, it's umbrellaed over a, a one big prime contractor, but I anticipate they'll be doing the Bozier side mostly. Uh, I, I asked that question. I remember on the west side, I can remember different local companies doing sections of it, and that's we why I asked that question. We anticipate the same uh, thing to happen on this, is local contractors will be the subcontractor, if not the prime. Thank you. And there is a goal, too. There is a big goal. I, don't, I, I can't quote it, but there is one. Any other board members have questions for these folks? I do. Ms. Rose? I'm going back to the city council now. But will any minority contractors be? Um... Yes. That's the DBE. DBE That's Disadvantaged Business Enterprise <laughs> is what DBE stands for. So there's always a, or often, typically, a DBE goal built into the contract. Okay, you said for DBE. the yeah, disadvantaged business enterprise. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I wanted so, to know. Yes, it, uh, uh, in the subcontracting or the contract? Subcontract. Mm -hmm. there, there's a mandated, I, I can't quote the actual percentage, but there's a mandated amount uh, that, that they should meet. That they will meet. Right. That's yeah. what I, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Will, will there be any uh, 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 art or landscaping? Art, no. So, this is all pavement? Yes. Right? Pavement and, and infrastructure. And infrastructure, okay, yeah. That's the Any goal of this one. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, our agenda uh, uh, kicks off now with uh, item number seven. <coughs> this is a consent agenda item. It's a uh, three-lot subdivision for industrial use. Uh, do I hear a motion in favor? Second. Mr. Andrews says uh, to approve. Ms. Uh, Ms. McCullough, I believe, said mm -hmm. second. Is there any further discussion on this item? Mr. Chair, you, you can approve both of those items together. You, you want us to hear them both together? Yes. This, the consent agenda, agenda you would be as one motion. Okay. Well, the second item is uh, Bell Mason subdivision. Uh, this is. Um, uh, west side of Linwood Avenue at the end of Grand Rue and Moose Ruel, uh, a 39-lot subdivision 
part of a plan unit development. So the motion would uh, cover both of these consent agenda items. Um, is it okay to amend your motion to that effect, Mr. Andrews? Thank you. Ms. McCullough, that's okay? That's fine. Do we have any further commentary or questions from the board members? And I'm assuming, Mr. Ben, we have no comment cards on these items. Uh, not an objection. Well, the, the surveyor's here, but. Very good, okay. Um, I think it's time to vote, uh, yay or nay, on these two consent agenda items. Please vote your machines and they're voted. Very good, okay. Now we kick off the public hearing section of the meeting. Uh, the item number nine is case number 23-23-C. It is a zoning request by Mr. Trenton Key. Uh, the location is 6400 Linwood and the existing zoning is R15 and Mr. Key would like the rezoning to go to C1 for purposes of a restaurant. And I'm assuming you are Trenton Key. I am not. Uh, excuse me, I, my name is Colin Thomas. How are you all doing this afternoon? Doing yeah, all right? Thank you. Mr. Thank Thomas, you. your address, please. My address is uh, 7169 Kimberly Road, Greenwood, Louisiana, 71033. Very and good. I am a legal you, researcher are you here for the representing product. Mr. Key? Yes, sir. Trenton Key is here, and as well as owner and manager is here as well. Well, tell us about the project, please. Awesome. Awesome. Do you mind if I if I pass you out anything? No, that's fine. Awesome. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. I got somebody for him. There you go. <laughs> I'll take it. Down. Hey, there's all our signatures and things like that from our peti online petition and local supporters as well. So once they get that, I'll start starting. All right. All right. And your name is Thomas, correct? Kylan Thomas. Kylan? Kylan Thomas, yes, sir. Very good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you have the floor. I have the floor. I was waiting for him to get it to you because he was reading it. Um, but hello, everyone. Uh, we are the Foundation family. Uh, we're not just a regular restaurant that's here just to make money. We're here to make a positive impact into the culture, into the city of Shreveport. I know we have prayer nights and we have a lot of things when it comes with violence, especially with the minorities as well as the majorities in our city. But we want to make a difference in there and not only make a difference through the food, but through the city. So we're the Foundation family in which we bring fresh southern food, Rotel favorites, handcrafted drinks <coughs> that brings a welcoming spirit to our community and family. So anybody that comes into our restaurant that we had once before in the Stoner Avenue area that was there in a district, I think District B in Stoner Avenue, I think so. District B. District, district B, B, yes. We was there for uh, approximately two years. We started in COVID-19 and we went straight uh, through the DoorDash delivery service. Within the, within the first two or three months, we had, the business soared. I mean, wh when I mean soared, I mean 250 orders within a week. So in, in saying that, I passed around a petition that we had online. And the petition stated that, hey, that we started the uh, restaurant back, but we want to bring back a restaurant with more flavor in a better environment as well. We can do more so we can expand to be a franchise area. So we put the uh, petition up on, on the board, I think on change.org, on April 6th. So from April 6th to today's date, we have uh, about, 600, about 600 signatures already, uh, ranging from Shreveport, Louisiana to Florida, all the way up to uh, Wyoming and to Rochester, New York. And you have everybody's name and address on there as well. Uh, as far as local supporters, uh, I think you have that too. Our local supporters, you mind if I put this up here before they make a decision? Uh, for our local supporters in the area of the Linwood area, I am just have the menu showing. And that we wanted to make a C1 commercial uh, residential area, I mean a C1 commercial area, because behind us is residential, which is the R15. To our left, we have a, to the west side, we have a heavy industrial. And on to the right side, we have a light industrial. So if it changes to a commercial property for a walk-up restaurant that's only not doing any dine-in, so you don't have any people hanging out and creating a bad environment, to just have a walk-in, order-up, concession stand type of service, we can get people in and out within a 10-minute range. So it would not stop any type of traffic or any type of, you know, violence or anything else that would happen into the area. So with our local partners, we have 60, 60 to 100 local people within the neighborhood that we canvass with the owner and manager as well as myself that we ask them and say, hey, if we had a restaurant in your area, what could we do, what could we be, and how can we service you guys? Because we have community giveaways, and I can talk for days, but how can we actually help you? So 
I brought to you guys a list of what about 600, 600 to 700 supporters for us, <coughs> and as well as I want to bring myself. And my last points, so I give you guys some questions. Um, the heavy industrial area, uh, we have the heavy industrial and light industrial around the area, so it, it would not change anything for us, the plans and the MPC plans that you have set for 2023. Uh, we have a wide area of supporters from local and national. We have family and friends that are, are working with our restaurant, so it's not like we're going to have em employee turnover issues because we know how to hire the people, hire and fire, and they're all family with inside previous experience and we also have food safety so we're not involving random people trying to get a restaurant together that we know nothing about we know about the bads and we know about the good and also we have a diverse menu with experience with black restaurant week with Shreveport uh, we did the KSLA uh, restaurant week and we did a video interview for 20 plus minutes online as as well we did national black restaurant week where we were recognized as well and the last thing I can say about us on DoorDash DoorDash I have a marketing uh, kind of company and DoorDash and Waiter personally contacted me about the uh, ads that we have. Over 110,000 views on Google live right now. So I'm just going to show you guys just the menu. So please don't try to get too hungry. You didn't bring any samples? Bring any samples? I did not bring it this time. You know, <laughs> next time. Next time. If you guys approve it, we'll, we'll do something. But um, what we here, we have the combos, our, our, our famous favorites, just to get you guys uh, pumped and ready. Like I said, we have 200 plus, 200 plus orders a week on DoorDash, and that's not including waiter that's just now turned into ASAP, and that's not even including, you know, delivery service that we can do ourselves. So we're talking about something that can bring money to the city and actually change the, change the environment, bring something like a, uh, what you call like the turkey leg hut or people, excuse my language, but slutty vegan that they have that bring in so much positive stuff to the culture and to the city that people can have an attraction to. You know, so we have the fam burgers, we have fish and shrimp, whole catfish fillets. We're doing everything fresh, not frozen. So we're not going the cheapest route to sell food. We're making sure that it can be a franchise in the long run. Now this this menu that I'm showing you guys here, and kind of zoom in, but it's okay. But uh, yes, this menu here is what we had at the uh, Good Time Rose Festival. So we did participate in that uh, on the years before. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Also, starting off, we have fan burger combos, big dog combos with rotel dip on there, Philly cheese steaks, fan wings, fried or naked wings, chicken tenders, all chicken tenders about six inches or more. Uh, so you're not going with a little bitty wings, so you're going to be hungry at the end. <laughs> we got chicken and waffles, so if you want to bring a southern favorite, we also have that, so you can get your taste buds. Healthy guys. If you want buffalo bites, you don't want to chew on the bone, we got buffalo mites that we cut up personally with the chicken. Shout out to Trent, because he started that. Uh, so we also have that fish. I already told you we have the whole catfish fillets. We're not doing no random white meat that we just found. We're not doing that. We have the large shrimp. Uh, we have large shrimp fan made salads from ham, turkey, grilled chicken, and grilled shrimp. And also family combos just in case we have a larger family or we're going to come out with catering within a year of opening. Uh, as far as the size, if anyone likes southern favorites, we have greens, Cajun fries, mac cheese, green beans, and of course many more things I can name without, you know, bogging you guys down. Sure, but uh, turkey, turkey leg or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I mean, uh, the menu goes on and on, but I just wanted to show you the diverse menu that we have, uh, the diverse group that we have, and the money that we'll plan on bringing to the city. Because in that Linwood area, it has, I mean, miles long. And we know that that, that Linwood area just got reconstructed not too long ago. Mm -hmm. So we have great traffic that can go there, as well as, I-20 and I-49 access, so if we do become bigger in that area, we have access, so we're not stopping any type of traffic. So um, that is my conclusion for my speaking. <laughs> any questions? Any questions? Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas, are you building a restaurant? Yes, sir. Okay. So it's, it's not brick and mortar, but it, it will be like a, not like a prefab building, but we're going to go into the accordance within the, the, the Shreveport Ordinance. So we're going to build the, um, get the contract for the concrete and things like that and see that how many parking lots we need to have and things like that, parking spaces, because you know that has to be approved. And then we'll build that building on top of there, and then we'll have it. So what's pending today is simply rezoning the property. Yes, sir. We're Just not rezone. looking at a site map or anything along those lines. Okay. No, sir. Uh, any board members have questions for Mr. Thomas? Just, uh, just one. You've been working closely with our staff, right? Yes. To get this, through this process, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Mr. Thomas, great job. You great and job. the rest of your staff that doing it because we, we need it. 
Yeah. Thank we you. need things like this here. And Thank you. I, for one, would definitely be one that's coming because my office is right around the, around the corner. Awesome. Awesome. We'll yeah. bring it right to you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring it right to you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Okay, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Thank you all again. Uh, Have a blessed one. Anyone in the room here to speak in opposition to the rezoning of this property? Oh, no, we have we have a we have a young lady on the right over here. Opposition right here. Uh, would you please come, come forward? And let us uh, hear from you. My name is Melvina Randolph, and I reside at 416 West 65th Street. I have been for over, since 1956, so that makes me 67 years of age. Know the neighborhood quite well. And in regards to the rezoning, I have just a short statement here. We received a letter from your commission advising us that Trenton Key is requesting a hearing regarding the property of 6400 Linwood Avenue for rezoning of said property forms R15 to C1 for a restaurant. After carefully scrutinizing this issue and talking to some other homeowners and businesses in this immediate area, we are in agreement that the rezoning issue will not benefit our area and only bring other problems including traffic, an unwelcome element, safety problems that will not only lower the property values in our community, but will cause additional traffic problems that may not have been anticipated by Mr. Key's or, uh, original request. Although we may be unable to prevent this development in our community, we are highly concerned that if we allow this rezoning to go through our streets, um, there will be overwhelming with unruly traffic and parking will definitely become um, an issue in which we will surely be required to call the Shreveport Police Department to defuse the situations that easily develop into an issue with additional stream of traffic coming and going on that corner. Please be advised that I'm asking you to disapprove the proposed rezoning and in talking to my neighbors and businesses that are close by this property, we are <laughs> urging you to disapprove this request. Thank you in advance for your consideration for our request and here in my op letter of opposition. Ms. Randall? Yes. You use the, the pronoun we quite often in this letter, but it's signed by you only. Um, do you represent an organization or a street or a neighborhood? What, what's the deal there? Well, <clears throat> excuse me, I have um, family and um, longtime neighbors that live in the community and have been for well over 60 years. So when I say we, I'm speaking of the original homeowners and by generational homeowners that are still there. Very good. Uh, any questions from Ms. Randolph? I have one. Yeah. Uh, did you hold uh, on, Ms. Fred? Go ahead, uh, Ms. Rose. Did you at any time consider a petition signed by your neighbors and family members? No. In opposition? No. I did talk with them verbally, mm -hmm. but in terms of actually documenting the uh, letter of opposition, opposition, no. And it's just you one here today? Well, my sister is here. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. That's what I wanted. I guess my question is, I'm looking at the um, the property. There's a business right there to the right, if I'm not mistaken, of that property. Do you have any problems? Do you, you have any problems currently with parking and a lot of traffic up and down that street right now? Um, on that corner, there is a business that's to the left. Yeah, to the left. And there is a home that's directly connected to the area where. Um, Mr. Key is wanting to set up his his uh, restaurant. I mean, like in his back, as, as close as the two of you, Mr. Sater, as well as Mr. Moss. That's just how close that property line is. 
The street is very narrow. I can't tell you footage um, in regards to the connecting property, but it's very, very close and always have been ever since I was a kid. I mean, two cars are squeezing trying to get past each other. So, Maxie, you currently have problems with traffic now? Well, yeah. Okay. Normally, when two cars are meeting each other, one have to slow down to get past the other. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions from the board from Ms. Randolph? <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Any other speakers in opposition? Any other speakers in opposition? Mr. Key, uh, you have an opportunity to uh, respond to Ms. Randolph. If you have a designated speaker, that's fine. Hey, how you doing? Y'all doing okay? Um, state your, state your name. Name, my name is Carolyn Key. Um, address 3819 Magazine Street, Shreveport, Louisiana. 71108 is my zip code. Um, regards to what she said, um, actually me and a team that, uh, it was Saturday, we went out to the, to the neighborhood to ask permission, which I think y'all had the uh, petition that was signed by the people. Um, they, I had no problem with anyone speaking negative about it. Everyone was um, Support. supportive. supportive, yes ma'am. And they were so ready for, for food in the area. And as for the businesses, um, I went to every business there, Ray's, uh, if you look, Ray's and all them, the Apollo Liquor, um, the other um, other businesses I went to, they had no problem with it. It actually sits on a corner, so it, they wouldn't have to go, the traffic wouldn't have to go in on that street, they, it could actually come in on Linwood. So the traffic wouldn't even go that way. So uh, I don't know what she's talking about, but I have talked to a lot of the uh, neighborhood people, and they was and supportive. They were supportive, yes, ma'am. Ms. Key, are you related to the applicant? That's my son. That's your son. Yes. Okay. Very well, good. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we have yeah. a petition signed, signed by the um, the neighborhood. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Any questions from Ms. Key? Okay, we've okay. heard uh, the proponents and the opponents. Ms. Randolph, you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, we have one that, are you in opposition or? I'm sorry, I can't do that. Can't do that. No, no, you can't do that. Can't do that. Can't do that. She has a lot of. Ms. Randolph, if, if the lady wants to come to the microphone, that's fine. Mr. Chair. No, he said you can't do that. Mr. Chair. Oh, you can't. Oh, I'm she sorry. Can't she can't. She, she lives in the community also. But and I did now. speak to one of the business, Mr. Chair, Mr. Jack Spring. Hold on, Ms. Randolph. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. She needs to cease speaking, Mr. Chair. She's totally out of order. Yeah. You've already asked for. Okay. Yeah. Already asked for everything. Everything. So uh, I think the comment period has come and gone. Yes. 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 Okay. I believe at this point uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Clark to respond. Uh, the question I have is, Mr. Key's going to have to take a few more steps with us before he opens his restaurant. Is that correct? Absolutely. We were just discussing. He's going to have to do a pre-application conference, and he's going to have to get a site plan. And the site plan is going to have to be reviewed and approved. The site plan will deal with all of the things that yeah. they're talking about, the traffic flow, where yeah. the ingress and egress will be happening, and so forth. And. Uh, these steps, will they take place in front of this board? Or? No, sir. They will take place in front of the staff. Okay. And the executive director will sign the uh, approved site plan. Now, will that site plan have to go before the city council? No, sir. No. So the rezoning goes before the, the city council? The only thing council. that's gone to the city council is the rezoning. Okay, very good. So uh, at this point, we have heard the proponents and the opponent and uh, rebuttal from the proponent so it's time for the board to deliberate Move i'd to like approve. to make a motion to approve <laughs> a one at a time please uh, i'd like to make a motion to approve second. that's miss jackson in approval who is seconding miss second. mccullough is seconding is there any further comment or questions 
Please vote your machines. <clears throat> the I item is approved, so we're going to go to the next item on the agenda. Thank you, folks, very much. Um, item number 10, uh, case number 23-31-C. This is a zoning request by Taylor's Catering. Uh, the owner of the property is Haps LLC. The location is 1143 McKinley Avenue. Uh, in parentheses, southwest side of McKinley, approximately 300 feet northwest of Kansas City Avenue. The existing zoning is industrial-MU. Uh, the request is to go to C4 for purposes of a reception facility. And your name, sir, is? I am Grayland Taylor. Mr. Taylor, your address, please. 1136 Lanier Street, Shreveport, Louisiana, 7107. Mr. Taylor, you have the floor. Well, well I would like for the board to uh, actually approve uh, the site as to there's already as an existing building right behind the restaurant on North Market. And there's nothing for me to say about Taylor's because a lot of you have eaten at Taylor's and you've eaten at Taylor's quite a bit, whether it's at a special event, a wedding, or at some type of event in the, in the city. So all of you are familiar, except for the ones that haven't had an opportunity, they don't know what they're missing. We are a full Southern soul restaurant from peas to greens to beans to pork chops neck bones pig feet you name it we're across the board barbecue seafood and you can ask some of your constituents about us if you haven't had a chance to eat mr trent did a very beautiful job we need more restaurants we need more food in our city there's not enough because my door is just blown open sometimes i want to lock the door the line is at the door and i appreciate Ms. mccullough mr moss i know you guys uh mr clark has eaten over the years so yeah you all need to get to taylor's so it's not much for me to say about taylor's we've been in the area on north market for 23 years uh as a successful business uh one of our um one of our, of our um, I want to say our working partners uh, with a venue closed up out at Greenwood, out at Greenwood. And so we have worked together over the 23 years. Uh, Ms. Ruffins, she closed hers up. So there was an opportunity for my wife, Ms. Taylor, and her, which is the caterer, the cook, the one that has the hand, to move into that space where we can kind of keep some of that business coming back. Because normally we are the one that goes to Ms. Ruffin's place and bring the food. So we were able to purchase the building right behind the restaurant. And so what we plan on doing is just rolling our food right out our back door, right into the event center. There will be no cooking in the event center. It's only a hall where we can host repasts, weddings, anything that our city, our community need. So that's the purpose of it. And it gives us an opportunity to bring the Taylor brand to North Market instead of going to Greenwood and to a lot of the other venues we normally go to in the city. That's pretty much it. Uh, Mr. Taylor, the uh, staff report indicates that much of the property around here is industrial in character and that's an issue for staff how do you address that well we will only host a event after hours everybody that's in that area is gone if you come in after five o'clock it's like a ghost town all those businesses are gone we will not be doing anything during the daytime in operation hours because it is congested already with Taylor's. Taylor's is packed, honestly. And uh, I, uh, there's a gentleman that's in the area, 
um, that owns several businesses, one across the street from the venue, Mr. Chuck, and uh, he, uh, he's been allowing us to use his part of his parking uh, for 23 years. And so um, that helps us. But like I say, for the venue, it will only be after hours. It will not be anything during operational hours. Very good. Any questions from Mr. Taylor? Well, I do. Mr. Taylor, you said it will only be after hours, but most of your repasses are during the afternoon, right? Right. I mean, if you decided to have a repass, you wouldn't have it after 5. It, it would be. Yeah, it would be on the weekends. On a, it would be either a Friday or Saturday or Sunday evening. Oh, okay. Okay. No, no businesses are closed during that time. Yes, they are closed. Okay. Any other questions from the board for Mr. Taylor? Anybody else in the room here to speak in favor of this application? Okay. In favor. You have an opportunity to speak, or you don't have to speak if you don't want to. Oh, I'm, just, I'm sorry, I didn't understand your rules. Yeah, just come on up to the mic, please. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Robin Bennett. Um, I'm sorry I didn't understand your rules because I haven't lived here for over 35 years. Yes, ma'am. Your address, please. 5422 Spanish Oak Drive, Houston, Texas, zip 77. Zero six six. Yes, ma'am. And good afternoon, sir. And good afternoon to each and every one of you. And thank you for allowing me to speak. I asked when I received this letter, I didn't understand because I have partial parts to this land. And I asked the question to the lady when I called her. I asked her, with this is my city, and this is my state, and this will always be my home. And I love this place. And I asked the lady, would this bring more jobs, help curb the crime in the area, bring things that can enlighten our city? And if it's going to do that, I would agree not to contest against this man who I've just seen for the first time in my life. So I'm here. If it's going to help our city, it needs to grow. It needs places for our young people to have jobs. If he's going to give them jobs, that was a part of my agreement. I agree with him if it's going to make Shreveport the way I knew it was and bring it back to the way it should be. And thank you. Yes, ma'am. Tell me your last name again. My name is Robin Yarbrough People Bennett. So your last name is Bennett? Yes. And you own property in vicinity of Mr. Taylor? Yes. Okay. Very good. Well, okay. Uh, any questions from Ms. Bennett? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you for an opportunity. Uh, uh, it's time now to hear from any opponents of the project. Anybody in the room here to speak against? Please come up. <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Patrick Ellers. I'm with E and E Investments. We own my brother and I, Chuck Ellers. We own the property to the north side of Taylor's. Mm -hmm. uh, the Taylors have been great neighbors. In fact, you guys even catered one of my son's weddings. Uh, been a great neighbor. My only opposition to this is parking. A um, couple years ago, we had an incident on North Market where there was um, some after hours goings on uh, there was parking all in my parking lot other business parking lots leaving trash and everything else we were have to clean up every monday morning we contacted the shreveport police department about it to no avail no help contacted the sheriff's department no help we finally had to out of our pocket hire off-duty deputies to sit on our parking lots after hours to run people off when i say a, it wasn't a few cars in our parking lots. It was 20 to 30. Mine, the neighbor to the north of me, neighbors to the south of the Taylors, and I just I don't want to go through that process again. And that's what my only opposition to this is, Mr. And Mrs. Taylor, is, is the parking. Yeah, you know, I I don't want to have to clean up every Monday morning again. And, and you know, you guys remember what was going on back then. 
But that, that's my only opposition is just the parking because I don't want to have to, well, honestly, I don't have to clean up somebody else's mess or have damage done to my parking lot or my property. Mr. Eller, um, I'm looking at a site map here. Um, what's the name of your business? Uh, it's Oilfield Industrial Supply. And actually, I can show you a map, site map here that I brought. If Mr. Kobe could help you there. Looking at it right there, this is the Taylor's two properties. Uh, we just acquired this building here as well. We're fixing to do an expansion on our property as well, but we have all this to the north. What, what's the area in green? That's just something I pulled up on Cattle Parish Tax Assessor to get a, a good map. That's, yes, that's actually North my market, property to well. free state. <clears throat> this, it's right next to the Taylor's right here. This, this is. So is your business uh, Dave's Tent? No, I, I just acquired those two buildings last week. I see. Okay. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Eller? I'm trying to see exactly where is his business. I'm looking at the map. But do you own, pardon? Excuse me. Do you own the green area? Yes, the That's green, right. the one where it says Robertson, Claudette, that one, and to the north of the green where it says E and E Investments. Okay. From McKinley down. Or at the corner of McKinley and North Market down. So both of your properties are neighboring his businesses? Yes. Okay. Mr. Eller, the incident you, you described, the evening incident, how often has that happened to you? That one was just kind of major, and that's the only time, but there was, uh, well, to be quite frank, somebody was holding drag races drag race. on Friday and Saturday nights on North Market. Mm -hmm. And that's where all the cars, and, and like I said, and, and the tailors had to deal with it too. I mean, we all did as business owners. We had to hire off-duty deputies to, to run these people off. Question. Mr. Moss? Uh, and I'm familiar with what you're speaking of because those races took place between odd hours, 1 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock and it was packed down North Market. Yes, sir. But that's the only time I saw that crowd in a while. And I guess my question to you is, is that, is there, is there a traffic problem like currently right now? No, the, no, there's not, like but I'm just, I'm, that, I'm, it's that not really the traffic, it's the amount of traffic. There's gonna be overflow or overspill of, of vehicles. Okay. And that, that's what I'm speaking of is the, I guess what I'm getting at, I don't think that you're going to get that type of. Well, I'm not saying it's the same type of time. people. Yeah, no, 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 no. By all means, I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying what. How, how do y'all plan to address that parking issue? Is my we're gonna, only question. Mr. Eller, we're going to let Mr. Taylor, Taylor respond after you finish. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Sater, did that, you that's my only concern. Okay. okay. What What use are you planning for these buildings? Are they going to have a lot of traffic? with what you're planning? I'm fixing to change the fence lines. I'm fixing to those buildings. I'm fixing to warehouse more product and I'm fixing to add another building on the property as well in the next year. Okay, but nothing to the public? No, sir. Okay. Any more questions for Mr. Eller? Mr. Eller, thank you. Any other speakers in opposition? Thank you, guys. Come on up, sir. Good afternoon. Your name, sir? My name is David Smith. And your address? Your address? My address, 6909 Corby's Drive, Shreveport 71106. And, and I'm, I'm in opposition for several reasons. Uh, I'm in support of, of uh, my tenant, uh, Oilfield Industrial, who's been a tenant of mine for a number of years. I own the building at 1136 McKinley 
which is on the other side, which is uh, direction wise is going to be on the even side of the street. So that's the north side of the street. And um, I don't know, he had, uh, if his picture showed that particular building in his uh, satellite, I don't have a picture to show. I've owned that building for 18 years. He's, he is the second tenant, um, and I, that's a long term investment for, for myself and my family. And we have great interest in protecting not only Mr. Ellers and his ability to, con could con to do his business in a peaceful way, but also any future tenants that we may uh, have for that building in our long term interest. I've been down that street at, uh, from time to time where you could barely get through because of the traffic. Now, I realize that's not an issue that, uh, I mean, that's an issue of various businesses that have been there over a period of time, but I'm looking back at 18 years. What concerns me is several things. One is, is the letter that we were, that I was notified of this meeting and then the letter from uh, HAPS LLC calling a meeting for March, um, I forget what the date was, uh, March the 19th maybe, to introduce to us what the concept was going to be and answer any questions. This was on a 3.30 on a Sunday afternoon. I was out of town uh, as I'm often on the weekends and was not able to attend, but Mr. Ellers did, and he said there was no meeting that took place to explain anything. I, I'm not here to, to beat anyone up, anybody's business up. I'm a, a live and let live type person. But the things that concern me on this letter from HAPS as it relates to what they're, what they're wanting to do one is is this is this is six day a week operation ex excluding Sunday according to the letter and the request is for uh, the times available to do business 7 a.m. in the morning Monday through Thursday till 10 8, 10 p.m. at night on Friday and Saturday that that time would ex extend till midnight so my question is this, uh, the, other, the other comment that, that bothers me too is the second paragraph where it's the last line it says on street parking would be provided on McKinley. And so that's the comment from the owner as to how the parking issue will be solved. It's pretty crowded in there. I don't know who owns the other businesses, but I can tell you as a property owner in Eggers, I have had incidents on my other properties. One particular instance where one of my tenants was, was doing a big shindig at night, causing disruption with uh, businesses in the area, and I had to go and have them evicted I lost a tenant, but I'm not, I wasn't interested in creating a problem for my neighbors. And um, so those are the things that, um, that bother me about this concept. I'm, I'm not against the tailors and their business and that sort of thing. What, what concerns me is an event center, there's no parking far to speak of, except for the streets. Now, what goes on after 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, when, when a lot of those businesses are closed, we may or may not know about. A lot of us have security cameras, and we will know after the fact. But Mr. Elders has already had problems that he had, at his expense, had to erect on McKinley to stop the loitering all hours of the night that the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department comments were, well, they're not hurting anybody. So the pawn shop, Mr. Ellers hired uh, police officers at their expense to put a stop to it. And that shouldn't, that should not be a concern. That doesn't affect the tailors in any way. I'm not trying to suggest that they were responsible for that. I'm just saying in general, 
as business owners and as investments in the, in the community, we need some help too. And uh, parking on the streets, well, I can see our parking lot across the street from this building at 11, whatever the number is, the building we're looking at. Me, our parking lot is directly across the street. So when Mr. Ellers is not there at night or on the weekend, his parking lot is going to be used, I can promise you. Okay. I think your time has uh, expired, okay. Okay. Mr. Smith. Um, any questions for this speaker? All right, sir, thank you very All right, much. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? Okay, uh, Mr. Taylor, it's your opportunity to respond. I feel a little slighted. Taylor's had nothing to do with any of that, that at all. That was another business two doors down and we all had the problem to clean up. We all had the problem, me too, I had to pick up. But that's not me. I am a law-abiding citizen. I do not carry on parties <laughs> or events with foolishness. My wife and I, we're very selective with anything that we do. For us, the parking, the parking, if you come to our restaurant, once everybody's go gone, it's like a ghost town right within our complex. Mr. Chuck has been very nice for 23 years to let us use part of a side of Jack Port that he owns. Just in the last couple of weeks, as they said, they just purchased this building that they're talking about on McKinley. They purchased two buildings right next. Dave's body shop, tent shop. Then there's another shop that belongs to a young man named Adrian. He does uh, pimp my ride cars, whatever, classic cars. That's it. Now, for as Mr. Chuck today, he spoke with my wife today, this morning, and let us know he had a surveyor out there this morning, and he talked to her and told her that he needed his parking, okay? She asked him would he sell it. He said what well, he needed for himself, so that's his call, okay? So we didn't, she didn't fuss. If I knew Mr. Chuck felt like he felt this morning when he talked to my wife, and now you show up at the council meeting, at the MPC meeting, then we had a community meeting, maybe we could have came to some kind of happy medium. But now I feel slighted to talk to my wife this morning, and now you hear voicing with how you feel, Ashley. Hey, it's business, Mr. Chuck, okay? So don't associate with me my business with anything that has happened in the past. I have had fundraisers over the 23 years at my place. Nothing never had happened. We had police officers. We did it properly. The way the city say the ordinance should be done. And you could check into it. Taylor's never had a problem. So don't associate Taylor with what has happened over the past months. Mr. Moss is familiar with the drag race and, and so forth. We had a problem with it too. And there's a motorcycle shop across the street. Sometimes they get a little bit. But Mr. Taylor's Kerr. has nothing to do with it. Mr. Ta Before you leave the podium, Mr. Taylor, um, I'm reading this letter in the staff package. Um, the site of the event venue is a single story warehouse structure 7,800 square feet, parking provided with 16 spaces based on the updated appraisal. Explain that to me, please. Yes, okay. Everyone that's in our complex, we have worked together for us to parking, 
okay? If it's like a just a circle of businesses. You have the cleaners, Authoration and the Harry Cleaners. You have the Jones car dealership. We have a couple of shops, mechanic shops. <laughs> We're right in that area. So we all, besides what's right there with the restaurant. Even if Mr. Chuck take his part, it's not going to affect me, okay? Because we have that. Yes, we have public parking. We have street parking. There's no signs that say what? No parking at a certain time. And we're only going to do an event only on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays when everybody is gone. Because now, if the, if the city say there's no parking on the street, if we have an overflow, no parking, we can't park there. But if it's a public street, it is open to the public to park. And if you go down, if you look at the pictures now, that is Dave's. Those cars you see there, that's on my property now. You see all of those cars, that's Dave. The building next over that Mr. Chuck purchased also, that belongs to the guy that does the, uh, the, 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 the classic cars. They are the one that has the problem. Then down on this side, on the left side, there's another body shop across the street. That's the problem where the congestion. So if the if they can come in there and clean that up, and good Mr. Chuck is gonna get it, so they'll clean it up. That area, that whole area will be clean. And so temporary parking on the weekend, I don't see the damage that it's gonna do to our area because I am not that type of we are not those type of business people. So we, we need this venue to help enhance and give some jobs, help our service. And I'm asking the board to approve to approve our request. Any questions Thank you for Mr. Taylor? I just have one question. The biz that, that the business is directly behind your, your, mm -hmm. your current business. Mm -hmm. You have six It's about ten, it's about fifteen feet. Fifteen feet. So I can roll six, right out of my back door. So you actually have sixteen parking spaces in mm -hmm. the building behind you, right? Mm -hmm. How many do you have at your current building on North Market? On North Market? Yeah. Right now with everybody we've got probably about maybe about 25, 30. Okay, 25 added to the 16. So that's an overflow. So some of those folks will actually be parking at your table. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah, because it's the back. Yeah. It's, it falls right in the back. It's, it's just right in the back. Everybody will be toward the back. And if there's an overflow, uh, once Mr. Chuck moves in, and then that's going to do away with all the congestion that you see on the street. And right now, the congestion is not that bad now. It's just that. Dave have so many cars, he's just not moving them. I, I, I understand what Mr. Chuck is saying, you know, it's like a sore eye, but it's, it's nothing to do with Taylor's. So you actually have 41 parking spaces. Yeah, so it has nothing to do with Taylor. All right. Any other questions from Mr. Taylor? Thank you, sir. Uh, staff has recommended we vote no on this rezoning. Uh, Mr. Clark? you want to okay. offer some comments? I mean, the issue seems to be uh, how the neighbors can get along with each other, and it's mostly about parking. Um, what does the staff has to say? In reference to, uh, you know, staff makes recommendations based on the provisions of the ordinance. And if all that required was staff recommendations, then there would be no need for a board. Uh, we, uh, you have the opportunity to listen to the comments of the public hearing and if you think that it's merited to approve the rezoning then we will have to deal with uh, the parking issues at the site plan process and if the, they are at the certificate of occupancy process and if the site the parking does not exist then Mr. Taylor will have to find the parking or get a variance in the required parking. The uh, parking on the street is available to him, correct? It's available, and I'm looking at a, a Google map where there is parking along McKinley. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the police have stated that, and the city attorney has stated that, if there is a not a no parking sign on a public street, there is no prohibition against parking. Okay, I believe it's time for us to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Any uh, any uh, input from the board? I'm looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Balderas says yes. Mr. Moss says yes. Any more questions or discussion? Please vote.
just don't want to come in. Oh, there it goes. Okay, I believe the item is approved. Looks like five to one or something like that. Okay, uh, this item is approved and um, we're gonna move on to the next item. All right, number 11 is uh, the agenda number. The case number is 23-1-CAC. This is a closure and abandonment by the city. Uh, do we have someone representing the city Chair, engineer? I might want to ask them to, if they're finished, to vacate the chamber. We can't hear. I, I'm sorry, folks. Can y'all take your discussion outside? Thank you. Afternoon, Mr. Clark, members of the commission. My name is William Talton. I represent the office of the city engineer. Uh, we received a request from Mr. Stephen Wallace to close and abandon a portion of Lockett Lane, which is that portion that extends to the west. At one time, that street continued all the way to the west, and it was closed and abandoned years ago in order to redo a subdivision, which you see there in, in orange. He owns all of the property on the south side. One of the lots has a house on it. He's looking at doing some redevelopment to his house and do an addition on it. And in order to do that, he's got to shift some lot lines. He owns the property immediately to the west of his domicile. And so he knows he's going to have to do a resubdivision of this area. Uh, he's looking at closing the band in this portion. Lockett Lane does a cul-de-sac there at the end. He signed a petition to that effect, and also Mr. and Mrs. Smith on the north side of it that abut all the property on the north side also signed a petition to that. Uh, this survey right here is the areas involved, A, B, and C, is how it will be assessed through the assessor's office. He's had a surveyor lay that out so that um, the assessor can facilitate the reassessment of the property. Um, there is a water line and a sewer line and a, a gas line in there. He does understand that if his redevelopment in any way affects these lines that he would have to pay for the relocation of those. Until that time arises, the city of Shreveport will retain a permanent utility servitude to uh, facilitate those facilities. Tell me your name again, sir. William Talton, T-A-L-T-O-N. Mr. Talton, does the city ever regret closures and abandonments? Absolutely. But I don't, a, I, don't see it in this, I don't see it in this case. This is a pretty cut and dried case. Um, the, the property owners that are affected are the ones that are fully aware of what needs to be done in the future. Mr. Wallace is uh, fully aware that at some point he should want to sell that lot to the west of him that he actually owns right now. He'd have to provide right of entry for it. So I believe he's well informed. Um, it only affects him and the person on the north side. So. This is not one I see that would cause any future problems for the city. Mr. Clark, are these cases uh, advertised to the immediate neighbors? Yes. Yes, sir. They are? Very good. Yep. Any questions for Mr. Talton? Say hello to Mr. Furlong, please. We'll do it. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Um, any, uh, anybody else in favor of this application? Anyone opposed? Board, what's your pleasure? Make a motion to approve. Second. Mr. Elberson makes a motion to approve. Ms. McCullough says second. Is there any further discussion? Please vote your machines. Okay. Item is approved. How about number 12? That would be case number 23-1-CTAC. These are amendments to the code presented by uh, the Metropolitan Planning Commission in the person of Adam Bailey. Uh, Adam Bailey, MPC staff, 505 Travis, Suite 440. Uh, these are Cotex amendments to the Shreveport UDC. There's six in front of you today. 
real briefly, I'll, I'll, I'll go over them. Um, the first is updating the use matrix as written in the report. Two and three are uh, um, adding a new uh, use, overnight truck parking principal use, so we're adding a definition and some new standards. Amendment four is amending table 8-1, which is off-street vehicle and bicycle parking requirements. And amendments five and six uh, deal with waivers and what the um, and cleanups. Uh, overall, these are cleanup amendments uh, that we have occasionally throughout the year. Hadn't had any in a while uh, that clean up various things. So, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer those at this time. Can everybody hear Mr. Bailey? Good. It must be me. Okay. Would you like for me to speak loud? Yes, I would like you to speak loudly. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Mr. Bailey? Uh, these uh, amendments to the code were characterized as uh, housekeeping items? Housekeeping, uh, cleanups, um, new uses that needed to be added due to the changing of uh, business within the community, uh, hence the overnight truck parking. Uh, due to, you know, circumstances to allow that to happen in a uh, more uh, productive way. So uh, new uses are sometimes added. Uh, we go through the code, especially land development, to see, you know, things that were overlooked maybe back in 2015, 2016 when the code was written, hence why some of the parking requirements need to be changed uh, to better fit what businesses actually need as opposed to uh, a, an abundant amount of parking or very parking good. that's not needed hence at a contractor's office bicycle parking very good any questions for mr. Bailey any uh, anyone in the room wish to speak on these agenda uh, these amendments to the code okay um, motion please mr. Sater says yes Ms. McCullough says second. Any further discussion? Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Thank Let's you. vote. Okay. Uh, that item is. Um, did I miss the vote? Oh. Oh. Waiting on you, Mr. B. He pressed no on me, so I guess I didn't need to <laughs> wait, click on no. Okay. These amendments carry, so that item is approved. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yeah, she got it. Yeah, I meant to vote yeah, yes. I don't know why he clicked on no. Okay. Okay. Okay, Ms. Culbert, are we good? Yeah. Okay, the next item is old business. Do we have any old business? We don't have any old business at this time, Mr. Chair. Any members have any old business? Okay, new business. Do we have any new business to discuss? I think we share it with you, uh, the, the new business of the upcoming activities that will be happening. Uh, we're in the process of updating the, the master plan, completing the RFP process. We're in the process of uh, getting more involved in neighborhood planning. We've, we've had some opportunities to involve other people that can be very uh, important in our process of doing neighborhood planning. Uh, and we shared with you that uh, we are also reviewing the ordinances that are being examined at the state level uh, in order to ensure that they will have little to no impact on the city of Shreveport. Very good. Um, from my uh, uh, perspective, um, uh, I was one of several people to attend the National Planning Conference in Philadelphia last week. It was a very beneficial meeting, a lot of very smart people with a lot of great presentations. And uh, I'm grateful to the uh, city and the commission for sending me up there. And I'll have a full report. So that means you might make some great ideas, right? Absolutely great, great yeah. ideas. All right. All right. Um, I have a feeling there's some people in the audience that have something to say. Uh, um, we've gone through our entire agenda, and um, 
unless somebody wants the microphone to address the MPC. You have a public comment section, uh, Mr. Chair. We do have a public comment period, yes. so the microphone is open. Yes, ma'am. Name and address, please, and Hi use there. the microphone if you don't yes, mind. Yes, I shall. <laughs> Pull that thing down. Ooh. Won't come down. Okay, I think y'all can hear me, yeah? Yes. My name's Jane Tappy, PO 764 Blanchard, Louisiana. Um, this item is not on your agenda for today, and um, we do know that the um, issue we're wanting to talk about today is the Ravendale apartment complex. It, the zoning did not need to be approved. It's right by use. It fits the zoning for that particular piece of property. But we, as the neighborhood, have some issues with the fact that it was brought to us a couple, three weeks ago, that of what was going on with these apartments. And we just, as the public would like, before site plans have been approved officially or anything has been moved on forward, that we give our opinion to you guys and our thoughts and our concerns for what's going on. And I don't know if y'all even recall anything about the Ravendell Apartments, um, but if you would take a moment for us, please. Um, we, I've stood in this room many times before and I've talked about and heard complaints about neighboring property values affecting the property value of another. Any other time, I'm on the opposite side. This time I'm not. So personally, I resided in the North Highlands area for over 30 years and now I have two sons and a daughter that live there. This Ravendale apartment complex will not improve the value of the homes in the area. We see what's happened on Grimmett Drive, just literally a couple miles down the road. And per the crime stats report that I literally looked at today, there's homicides, rapes, robbery, aggravated battery, aggravated assault, and burglaries reported. This is a list of the things we do not want to grow right in our backyard. So those facts are facts, those numbers are numbers, and they're not gonna add to the value of our homes there in the North Highlands area. Now that was my residential hat. Now I put on my, real, my realtor hat. Um, I have the property sitting right next door to this listed for $1 million. This low income apartment complex is not going to help my value on this $1 million property. It's not gonna help it to increase and certainly, and probably not even to hold its value. So that's a real concern for us, not just in the residential area, but in the um, commercial right next to it. My next concern is how many people will be in this area. It's very small. It's only 167 feet wide, and that's not including any setbacks and things that are gonna be required by you guys at the MPC. So how can you have apartments that are basically X amount of feet wide, and I couldn't read the map. It was too small, or I would give you that footage, but I couldn't read it. So the concerns, the numbers, they just don't work for in my eyes. There's 104 allocated parking spots, and yet we still have room for people to live in 60 units. So that's 120 to 240 people, 104 parking places, and the zoning that it's approved for, has retail business on the bottom. So that's in, before you include any of that traffic in there. Um, so how can you safely maneuver or drive 104 cars, if they all have cars, and about 200 people in that same space? Do the children, the people coming in and out, is it just like they dodge the cars or is it a hit and miss kind of thing, you know, that, that's not meant as a joke at all. So, um, also, as far as I can tell, as a local realtor, there are no other buildings with this type of retail on the bottom and housing on the top, except the Villaggio and Bossier. The Villaggio and Bossier is an upscale businesses that are complementary to their clientele, and it's a little bit different than low income housing on the top and businesses on the bottom. It's just different. Um, and Mr. Chair? I'm sorry? Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. The time. Okay, I've got like one paragraph left, can I? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so um, how do you let the children outside to play if you've got businesses down on the bottom with strangers down there? To me, as a parent and a grandparent, that doesn't work. So lastly, my concerns are this. 
Um, who in the world would want to bring more retail to a location that has empty businesses right now within 100 yards of this location? There are 12 potential businesses. Only six of them are occupied. I've lived in this area all my life, and that's the way it's always been. I don't think I've ever seen all of the places filled with businesses. They're never. They're always empty. So how can they consider bringing more businesses there when six of the 12, 100 yards away, are vacant and have been all this time? So that's just some of our concerns before site plans are approved and things like that. We know the zoning fits. The zoning is zoning. Site plans and what they're trying to do, um, I'm sorry, I can't get behind and neither can the rest of us. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions for this speaker? Ms. McCullough? Yes, uh, give me your name again. Jane Tappy. Tappy. Have you uh, spoken with your council person uh, regarding your opposition? Uh, uh, no. Of this zone? No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, I have not. You ask me. I have not. They have. I may, may I interject something, Mr. Chair? She is I'll let them speak that because I can't speak yeah. for it. If you're going to speak, you got to be at the mic, please, Mr. Uh, Clark. Okay. Okay, so no ma'am for me. Well, that's all I have. I did that's not personally. Okay, uh, any other questions for Ms. Taffy? Is it Taffy? Is it with a T? Taffy, uh -huh, T-A-P-P-E. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Any, uh, any other members of the public want to speak today before we shut her down? One more time, Mr. Chair, may I interject something before you go forward? Go ahead, Mr. Clark. Uh, and, and I'd just like to share with the board and the citizens that I did have a long conversation with Ms. Taffy on yesterday. I shared with her all of the steps that I've had conversations with uh, two more residents of North Highland to share with them uh, uh, the situation as it is, uh, that we will be reviewing the site plan uh, uh, extremely close uh, to ensure that the concerns that they have are properly addressed. Uh, like she said to you, uh, there's no need to talk to a city council person because the zoning is in place. You can do not deny someone the right to build when they have a use by right by zoning law. So they have a right to build these apartments with the above ground residential uses. We're going to make sure that, uh, you know, the things that she shared with me, and we're gonna get her uh, the, the information that she's requested, which is had to try to get this hearing together today, she requested yesterday. But uh, we're gonna you know, make sure the parking is in place. We're gonna make sure that the circulation is in place. We cannot deny someone an opportunity that he has or she has by right, even if there are uh, 12 uh, retail spaces and only six are occupied. That person wants to invest that money in that property, then by right, that person has the right to do that. But I just wanted to reassure these citizens again that you know we're, we're not trying to sneak nothing in. Uh, I've asked the land use staff to, to start research immediately on exactly how these type uses are operated, uh, what changes need to be made. Uh, you know, it, it just appears that this was an opportunity. It, it did not have to be rezoned and it gives the impression that it was a workaround, uh, that in order to do this by right, it had the property is zoned commercially, and it gives that opportunity. Uh, and we're gonna look at that even closer too, because, but we are on top of this situation. I mean, I, and I just wanted to reassure the citizens of that. This does not require any action by you, not require any action by the city council. We are on top of the situation and plan to not stop talking with these citizens. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Yes, sir. My name's Patrick Lowry. I live at 937 Candler Avenue, 71107. I'm here to, I am also the president of the North Hollands Neighborhood Association. I'm here to speak in opposition to the Ravendell Apartments. My family has been in the North Highlands area since 1948 when it was first developed. 
My mother is 93 years old and still resides there, and I plan on residing there for many more years. Uh, one of the things about our neighborhood, it's a very diverse neighborhood, beautiful neighborhood. A lot of families can get out, walk, play, enjoy the neighborhood. One of the problems in Shreveport is there's a lot of neighborhoods where you can't. There's a lot of crime, there's a lot of violence. I'm in opposition and many of my neighbors because of the trash along at Ravendale. Ravendale is a two-lane uh, two road and has an excessive amount of traffic right now which will complicate things. Many of the neighbors feel very unsafe along Ravendale because of the amount of traffic as of right now. And we are now uh, putting together a petition. We have over 150 signatures that we will be presenting. And I just wanted to get up here and voice my opposition and hopefully it'll carry some weight. Thank you. Any questions from Mr. Lowry? No? Thank you, sir. Anyone else need to speak? My name is Warren Donaghy. I live at 3135 Old Morrisport Road. And I'm also about the Ravendale Apartments. We feel that it's going to cause more crime in our neighborhood because, I mean, it's, and it's really secluded. And because it's government housing, we already have that down the street, as mentioned before which is not good and it does cause a lot of crime because it they come up and down Old Morrisport Road coming from there. The empty stores that ain't gonna be any good. Um, let's see. And then we got a letter about the rezoning thing but yet the plans online have already been approved after we got a letter for the rezoning thing that doesn't make any sense. And it says, um, and I don't understand why we weren't told about it as a community until it was almost done. Because our councilwoman said that it was like two years ago that she was approached with it, and she told them then that we were, as a community, we're not going to do like this. And it just happened anyway, around, just around us. I mean, do these, do these community meetings that we have, do we have any impact on this? or not? Uh, I, I believe Mr. Clark attempted to address those concerns. You, you heard what he had to yeah. say. Yes, sir. And then as far as the zoning goes, it's only zoned for above ground dwellings. The multifamily dwelling that's on there is a special zoning that was voted on apparently to allow this to happen. So it's not, it's, it's only zoned for that. It's not zoned for multi-dwelling unless it's especially approved. And it seems to me like if something's especially approved, then the community ought to be able to get involved in that. Mr. Clark? As I shared with Ms. Taffy um, yesterday, uh, we required a neighborhood participation plan meeting that was not required by ordinance so that the citizens could meet with this developer and get explained exactly what he was proposing to do at that location. I think that that was giving the citizens an opportunity to ask any questions that uh, they deem necessary. And I've shared with this board, we are constantly reviewing the neighborhood participation plan process to ensure that it is working properly and is working effectively. But when we have situations like this, because as I've shared with them, we, we want to, to the best of our ability, to ensure that citizens, uh, if not exactly happy, they are, it is clear that we've shared all the information that's available and we've done everything that we can in order to assist them in negotiating uh, the exterior, et cetera, and et cetera. That has not changed. Uh, it, angers people sometimes when I do that, but I still believe that citizens have a need to know what's coming in to their neighborhood uh, and have a need to have input in that situation. So that has not changed. Uh, I've shared with them that, you know, they can come over and over and over again, and, and, and that's a right that they have. Uh, I'm not going to say to them, that some would say, 
you know, it's going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to continue to say we're here to try to make this as an agreeable process as possible. There are just some times when people have a use by right, they have a right to do what they're doing, and there's nothing that we as government can or should do to try to prevent them from doing those things. And that's where we are at this one. But I've shared with Ms. Taffy, because we've been knowing each other for a while, and, and, and she knows that I am not going to stop doing what I promised to do. Uh, I believe that uh, in order for the MPC to have credibility, my word has to be my bond. And we're not going to stop doing, but there may not be, you know, a solution that's totally in favor of the citizens. What's the zoning of this property, Mr. Clark? I think it's C1. And how long has it been that way? Uh, I don't even, it's been there for a while. It's C3, actually. It's C3? Yes. Okay. And it's been C3 for as long as we've had a, a zoning code or what? 2015. Okay. And it's, I mean, it's right behind a commercial development. It's right behind the Brookshire's. And that shopping center up on the North Market in Ravendale. Uh, Ravendale has a number of fairly large single family homes, does it? Farther not? down, yes. But this particular right across area, the street from it. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Mr. Donahue, Donahue, Donaghy, thank you for your remarks. May I speak again, please? Uh, Ms. Tappy, I think you've had your shot. Anyone else have a, a comment? Please come on up. Yes, ma'am. Name and address, Hi, please. Beverly Scheich, S-C-H-E-I-C-H, -E -I -I 3025 Old Morning Sport Road, 71107. And I wasn't going to speak. However, I, I need y'all to understand, when we all feel like this, we do not have a problem with people living in low-income housing. We don't have that. People need a place to live. We get that. We just don't want it in our backyard because we live right, I mean, <laughs> We could hear 220 from our house there on no more Sport Road. Sometimes we can hear the gunshots. Those are low income housing. What's gonna be behind us is also gonna be low income housing. Who is gonna guarantee us that some of those people are not gonna shoot guns behind our house and hit one of us? We've already had them hit our house going down no more Sport Road. So I mean, who can guarantee us that these people won't do that? They need somewhere to live, but there's hundreds of acres out there that they could live in, hundreds. And we don't want to deny them that right, but we just don't want it in our backyard. And that's and there's deer, and I'm sorry, I know that's not relevant, but you know, <laughs> there there is deer. It comes in our backyard. So what's going to happen to the wildlife? But anyway, that's all I had to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay, um, I believe I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Hit the gavel. Um, any objections? <laughs> Meeting's closed. Thank you. 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 Thank you.